Whenever you can't solve a question on the SAT, it literally comes down to these two things. And you must get these things straightened out throughout your prep process. Otherwise, you will not get to your target score. So long story short, the key to this puzzle comes down to two simple pieces. And instead of boring you to death with a bunch of words and mumbo jumbos, let me show you a quick example. But if it's your first time here, my name's John. I've been an SAT math tutor for the past 11 years. And my specialty is taking a student who's currently in four, five, six hundred range to 700 plus by their next SAT through online program, SAT Math Accelerator. So let's take a look at this question. Difficulty ranging from one to five, this would fall under four slash 4.5. It's one of the hardest questions you will ever see on the SAT. And whenever you get stuck, it comes down to these two things. The first one is going to be the concepts. And if you've been following me for a while, I'm all about mastering the 25 concepts before you even touch your next practice exam. So to quickly break this question down, the question is giving us two of these equations right here. And it tells us that what is one possible value of X that would make this equation true? So we're looking for value of X that would make the equation true. But what does it mean for the equation to be true? So what's going on here is that your Y value is set equal to zero. And in order for the equation to be true, you're looking for value of X. We're looking for value of X that would make the Y value equal to zero. So our goal is to find the value of X that would make the Y value equal to zero. And how are we going to find that? Well, if you think about a parabola or any graph for that matter, if they're graphed out like this, the point where the graph intersects the X axis is known as the X intercept. And at the X intercept, you're going to have a certain X value, but your Y value is always going to be zero. So that means the X intercept represents the value of X that would make the Y equal to zero. So our goal here is to find out the x-intercept for a parabola. And how do we find the x-intercept for parabola? There are two ways on the SAT. The first is for you to simply factor the equation. The second method is going to be the quadratic formula. And because we don't know what b is, we can't factor this one. So we're going to have to go with quadratic formula. So the first key point here is that if you don't have the right concepts in place, if you don't know how to factor or use the quadratic formula, or more importantly, realize that the purpose of these two things is for you to find out the location of the x-intercept. If you don't have the right concepts in place, you're not going to be able to solve this question. Question. Every SAT question is multi steps, but knowing the right concepts to apply to the question is your very first step for every single question. If you don't have the concepts streamed out, then you're not even going to be able to get started on the question. Now, if this question was like a difficulty one question, then knowing the concepts alone would get you to the answer. But the problem is, this is difficulty 4.5. So, even if you know the factoring, even if you know quadratic formula, you're not going to be able to solve it. Why is that? Well, that's because it comes to the second point of critical thinking, also known as connecting the dots. So even if you know the quadratic formula is what you need for this question, the hard part is making the connections. How are we supposed to use the quadratic formula for this question? Well, the quadratic formula, if it's applied to the equation we have right here, we're going to get minus B plus or minus B squared minus 4A and then C over 2a, which is going to be just 2 times 2, which is going to be 4. And this can all be simplified down to just 8c over 4. And the purpose of the quadratic formula is to give you the values of the x-intercept, which is what we're looking for. Now, if you look carefully, you're going to realize that, hold on, this equation right here is literally same thing as the top portion of this fraction right here. We have minus b radical, minus b radical, same thing on the inside. So that tells us that if we can get rid of this 4 to the other side, it's literally going to be the same equation as this top one right here. So all we have is going to be just x intercept on the other side. And if we move 4 to the other side, we're going to get 4 times the x intercept. That is same thing as this right here, which is same thing the question provides. And because we know this is equal to what? It's equal to 16. That means 4 times the x intercept is equal to what? It's equal to 16. So if we get rid of the 4 here, we're going to get that our x intercept is equal to what? is equal to four. And if we use the second equation, we're going to get 24 is equal to that divided by four, we're going to get six. Or you can use 24 here and then divide by four and also get six as your answer. The question is asking what is one possible value? Anytime SAT asks for one possible value, that means there's more than one answer available. In this case, four or six. So as I mentioned previously, every question on the SAT involves multiple steps. You first start off with a question and then you get yourself to the answer. And it's all about making multiple, multiple connections between these dots. In order for you to make that first connection, you have to have the right concepts in place. That's what gets you started. But when it comes to hard questions on the SAT like this, it's all about critical thinking, which is known as connecting the dots. You have to make the connection between the concept you required and the details that the question provides. And if you can do that, that's what allows you to make these connections and get yourself to the answer. That's why the accelerator program focuses on getting you all the concepts ready Ready, and then the solidifier gets your critical thinking ready. It's going to strengthen your ability to connect these dots and make these hard questions easy. So whenever you're studying for the SAT, one, make sure you understand all the 25 concepts that are tested. And two, strengthen your ability to connect these dots by drilling down on the hard questions.